precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit. Well, good morning, everyone. It is good to be back with you after only a few weeks. I wasn't here that long ago, which is nice. Uh, always good to be here. Well, first, the notice I'm sure you're all anticipating. If you have not seen the government's announcement as of last night, we are, looks like we're going into a second full lockdown, mostly full. Uh, what, Thursday, I think it is, and they have uh, announced that that does include public worship on Sundays. So keep in mind that we'll have to postpone or have only online and distanced worship, I think for the rest of November is what they're looking at. So you'll get more from the circuit and from Stewart and such, uh, I'm sure in the next day or two, but do be on the lookout for that, that thing. It is worth recognizing that our online Zoom services and the daily devotions are continuing as usual. And if you haven't found a way to access those yet and you would like to, uh, do get in touch with someone from the church who you think might know. The circuit office has got all that information. Uh, Stuart or myself, anyone, uh, a minister can tell you, make sure you know how to get on those those online things and the Zoom services are available to anyone. You don't have to have an internet connection for that. You can use your phone to access those as well. So it's worth knowing that you can always stay connected uh, even if we're not here physically. But in the meantime, welcome to everyone here today, to those joining us online as well. It is good to come before God in worship at this time. Just the, uh, the other notice for those who are in person. We're not singing today, but we do have excellent music that I'll invite you to listen to, to hum along with. Those at home, you're welcome to sing as loud as you want, so have at it. Let us begin with a prayer and a time of coming together before God. Let us pray. 
O oh God, you are our God, and we are your people, and we are grateful that you have claimed us as your own. You have set us in the company of saints past and present, among those who have made bold witness to your goodness and your truth. Your word opens up new futures where we see no way forward. You know the places in our hearts where we are afraid, afraid of a future we cannot control, afraid of losing health and independence, afraid for the well-being of our children, afraid that past mistakes might ruin our future. Write the stories of your people deep into our hearts so that we may learn to trust you beyond our fears. Give us hearts and minds and spirits ready to trust and follow wherever your spirit leads, confident that you will not lead us beyond your loving embrace. We ask in Jesus' name, whose outstretched arms welcome us and hold us securely in your grace. Amen. Our first song this morning is a good traditional one. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. So today, November 1st, 1st of November, is a special day in the church calendar, which you may, you may know. Does anyone know what day it is? All Saints, there you go, you all got it. For those of you who don't know, you might recognize what yesterday was, All Hallows' Eve. That's because today is All Hallows, All Saints' Day one that is celebrated in some churches more than others, but it's one of my favorites, uh, and it's one that we tend to celebrate fairly regularly in the States, at least in my tradition. And one of the traditions we have, uh, All Saints, as we'll get into in the sermon, is more than just about the saints of the past, but one of the very special traditions we have in the States 
is remembering all those who have gone before us from a particular congregation in the past year. Uh, and the most beautiful tradition that I have always grown up with is to light a candle for each person as their name is read during the service. And I'll invite you during this service, I don't know who you might have had in your friends or family or just in this community, but I'll invite you to take some time during this service, maybe during the prayers later on, to just think of those people and lift them up before God today. It is a very special time to remember all those saints that have gone before us. Our scripture reading, however, points us to the work of saints past, present, and future. And so we'll hear from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I would imagine that all of us have, at one time or another, been helped along, been inspired on our Christian journeys by men and women of the church. I want you to take just a moment and try to think of someone just one person or several who's helped to shape your life of faith. What made you take note of them? How did they reflect God's love to you? For me, I think of my grandmama. She used to take me to her Sunday school class whenever I'd come to visit her because I was too shy to go sit with the other kids my own age. And then there was Miss Norma, my parents were both in the choir at church, so I sat with her every Sunday, and she helped me learn how to use the hymnal. Or I might think of the young couple, not much older than me, but those who helped me, uh, helped out with our campus ministry at university. They were an example to all of the students of what a healthy Christian life could look like after school. Today is All Saints Day. A day that isn't always celebrated in the Methodist churches here, but one of my favorites in the church calendar. Because today we remember and give thanks for the great multitude of women and men who have gone before us in the way of faith. Now, when we hear that word saint, we often think of those pictures of the ancient people who lived lives far, far away in monasteries or convents or as hermits. We think of all those people who have that title, Saint, in front of their name. Saint John, Saint Francis, Saint Catherine, Saint Cuthbert. And we might feel a little strange celebrating the saints here in a Methodist church, especially those of us who aren't into any high church background. But the word saint doesn't just mean those people who've been declared one by the Pope or the higher-ups of the church. The Bible uses the word saint to mean anyone who's a Christian believer, living or dead. We usually think of a saint as someone, any Christian, who's particularly holy or virtuous. And so today, All Saints Day, is a day we remember all the saints. 
All those who have ever believed in Christ and have lived holy lives, past, present, and future, and to celebrate that we are also a part of that same body. Today is a day to remember that those people you thought of just a moment ago, that pastor who prayed with you in the hospital, that youth minister who told you that Jesus loves you, that woman who brought you a pie when you were sick, that neighbor who helped you when your car wouldn't start, all of these people stand alongside those more famous saints. Stand alongside Paul and Augustine and Therese and John Wesley. Today is the day when Christians around the world gather to celebrate the lives of all those saints, from the most renowned to the most humble who have gone before us. We give thanks for those saints who are living still today. And we take this day to think of how all of us, you and me, are called to live lives of holiness ourselves. Our gospel passage today is a familiar one to many of us, the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus lists the Beatitudes, this list of qualities and virtues that exemplify those who he calls blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the pure in heart, the peacemakers. These are the attitudes and behaviors that please God, that are a cause for blessing and honor. These are the attitudes that set apart those who are truly Christian, those who are a part of the community of saints. Because what makes a saint but someone who lives their life according to the will of God? What makes a saint but someone who chooses to try and live their life in such a way that every action, every attitude is a witness to the love and mercy we have from Christ? Those are the Christians we celebrate today, the people who have changed the world one tiny step at a time, one person at a time. People like Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King Jr., C.S. Lewis, and the many, many local women and men who change their communities for the better just by allowing their faith to shape their actions, by standing up for their belief in Christ even in the midst of temptation or persecution or anxiety. They were each witnesses to their Christian faith because that's what a witness is. Yes, it can mean going out and preaching on the street corners, but it more often comes from any action that tells people about the love and salvation we have in God and in Christ. Being a witness of God means being open about our faith, being unashamed of our belief in God and in salvation through Christ. It means living in such a way that God is reflected in our own lives. Just as all of the saints we know of, just as that person you thought of at the beginning, their influence comes from the image of God that we and others have seen in them. And so today, I invite you to ask yourself this question. How do you reflect God in your own life? How have you inspired others in their faith journey? Maybe you've sat on a bench with someone, sharing the love of Christ with them. Maybe you've sent a card of encouragement to someone going through a hard time. Maybe you've been a friend to someone who often gets overlooked. Maybe it's simply your unashamed choice to take the time to worship on a Sunday morning or evening or through daily prayer and devotion that serves as an inspiration for others who haven't managed to make that commitment themselves. Every time you choose to live according to those kingdom values, those Sermon on the Mount values, you are witnessing to the power of Christ over all things. And if all that seems like a tough order, if comparing ourselves to the great saints and martyrs of the past seems like a gap too wide to cross, then remember this, it's not our own ability that makes us able to witness for Christ. As one writer said, men and women do not by sheer determination and self-discipline become saints. Sanctity is a divine gift. Living our lives in holiness is the power of Christ's resurrection at work in human lives. We are saints, not because we are perfect, but because God's power is at work in us. 
It's only up to us to be open to that power, those nudges from God, to then choose to act on the vision that Christ has for us and for the world. Today is the day when we remember all those who have gone before us, who have lived their lives as witnesses to Christ, not simply as a sort of memorial day, but so we can all continue to be inspired by their lives to do the same. As another commentator wrote, today we think of how we can align ourselves, align our lives with that historic chorus of people who have been sanctified, made holy by Christ. People who in happiness or difficulty found their hope in Jesus and made their way as part of the kingdom of God. And we join their work in the present as people who live according to those kingdom values outlined by Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount, using our actions, our attitudes, and our entire lives as witnesses to our faith in Christ. Today is a day when we celebrate the highest aims of humanity, to be kind, to love one another, and to approach with honesty and wonder a God who is so much greater than ourselves. So let us continue to give thanks for both the saints in glory and those on earth who have led us to Christ, who have changed the world around them one action at a time, one relationship at a time. And as they have shared their Christian witness with us, may we also learn to add our own voices to the story so that all the future generations may also hear about the grace and love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our next song is a response to this. I'll invite you to listen and enjoy the words.
Let us pray. God of all blessedness, we turn to you now with our prayers for others, seeking your blessing on all for whom we pray. You tell us, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we pray for those whose spirit fails them, that they might be strengthened in their faith, for those whose poverty is physical, that they might have an equal share in the fruits of your kingdom, for those whose outlook on life is poor, that they might have a glimpse of hope and purpose. You tell us, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So we pray for all who are cast down by grief, from recent losses or a deep-seated sorrow over many years, that they might know the comfort of hope, the comfort of love, the comfort of new life. You tell us, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. So we pray for leaders and for followers, for big people and little people, for the loud and the humble, that in acceptance and grace we might work together for the good of all. You tell us, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. So we pray that we who seek to live into that very righteousness might indeed be filled with wonder and joy in this very place. You tell us, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. So let us forgive others, that we might know and understand the true meaning of forgiveness. You tell us, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So make our hearts pure within us, that we might know your love all the more. You tell us, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. So we pray for all who work for peace, peace in relationships, peace in communities, peace in politics, peace in places of conflict, peace for the body, mind, and soul, that they might see themselves and others as God's children. You tell us, blessed are those who are persecuted, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we pray for the broken and despised, the marginalized and the downtrodden, the victims and the dispossessed, the refugees and the homeless. This kingdom, our precious kingdom, belongs also to them. As we pray for others, we pray also that you will hold us always in communion with the saints of all the ages, those who have been blessed and whose memories, example, and closeness bless us even at this present time. We take a moment to especially lift up prayers for those who are facing anxieties about this new lockdown, about the virus, or any number of things going on in this season. And as we do so, we sit before you in a brief moment of silence as we lift up our own personal prayer concerns. Holy God, we ask all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We come now to our final song. I'll invite us to listen to these words far and near. Say it loud. Come, sailor, bring. 
God's own Son for sinners died. Goes again, He is alive. Say it loud, say it strong. Tell the world what God has done. Say it loud, praise His name. Let the earth rejoice. begin. Oceans roar, nature sings, for he comes to judge the earth in righteousness and in his truth. Say it loud, say it strong, tell the world to the uncertainty of the coming weeks and months. Go knowing that you do not travel this road alone. Let the company of the saints, past, present, and future, inspire you. Let God guide you. And let Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, comfort and sustain you through every step of the way. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and always. Amen.